Hello, I'm Jackie von Sifferberg and I'm the founder of the Solution Focused Institute of South Africa. I'm currently interviewing prominent solution focused practitioners to get their insights and ideas on solution focused therapy. Today, I'm very pleased to have Merit Watson here from the School of Merit. Welcome, Merit. Thank you, I'm Jackie. so glad you can join us. Thank you. Merit has used solution-focused principles in her school. Merit owns a private school in Edenvale, Johannesburg, that believes that children are not defined by their difficulties or problems or the things they cannot do. Rather, Merit has trained her staff to look at things children can do, to look at children's strengths, children's resources and their skills. So I'm really glad to have Merit here with me today. Well, Merit, welcome and thank you for joining me. Merit, I'm just so interested in hearing why you decided to implement a solution-focused uh, philosophy for the School of Merit. Jackie, because we're a small school, um, parents tend to think that the smaller environments the children get more individual attention, that their problems will, be dis will disappear, that the teachers will be able to fix their problems. Um, and there was a need to actually look at how do we do differently. Teachers were becoming frustrated. They just felt that the traditional methods of teaching were not being beneficial anymore. They felt burdened. They felt totally unsupported. And it was a real, real big need for us to review what could we do differently to help these children that were so entrusted to us by their parents. So Merit, how did you go about setting up a, a solution-focused philosophy for the School of Merit? What did you do? Well, Jackie, we got hold of you and the Institute, uh, the Solution Focused Institute of South Africa, and thank you to you for coming in to train our teachers once every two. So it's basically once every three months that we have had teacher training. During those training sessions, it, you've actually tapped the teacher's own strengths and taught the teachers how to look for the children's strengths. Right taught the teachers how to look for exceptions. So it's not just about the strengths that come to school, but when was the problem never there? There's always times when children have got strengths, when they can do things, when they can succeed. We also utilized the scaling techniques of solution-focused therapy, and we worked collaboratively in setting best hopes or goals for the children, so the children could buy into what they felt they could do. Children also needed to speak about what they could do and not what they couldn't. So that was the mind shift for us and that's how we started the entire process. So the teachers were trained at the beginning of every term and at the moment we're running into our third year Correct. at the School of Merit. So I'm just interested in finding out, looking now over the three years, what impact has this made on your teachers? In my opinion, the impact has been significant. Um, the teachers' frustration levels have dropped they're quite excited to come to school. Wow. They've brought the humour back to the classrooms. They're not bogged down by all the paperwork and having to fix problems mm -hmm. because they collaboratively work with the children now to empower the children to help them fix their own issues and to overcome some of their own barriers. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot more lightheartedness, there's a lot more energy, there's a lot more excitement. Teaching has become the profession that we, would, we really signed up for many, many years ago. So it's really... Um, enlightened your teachers and Absolutely. given them the passion back. Absolutely. And Merit, what, what impact has it had on the children? Because we never worked with the children or the parents. We only trained your teachers and staff. And I'm just curious to find out, has it had an impact on the children? And what impact has it had on them? Jackie, for me, positivity is contagious. So when the teachers walk into the class and they are energized and excited about seeing their children and excited about what they're going to impart in the classroom, yeah. that energy and that, con that positivity is contagious and it rubs off on the children. The children feel that they've got a sense of belonging. They feel that their teachers hear them. They feel that they can trust their teachers. They love to come in and share what they can do and what they have done over the weekends. Um, they share a lot more with the teachers than when beforehand when the teachers used to growl and shout and always be in a bad mood. Mm. They just have, they're far more relaxed and they're far more willing to share. And Merit, has it had any impact on their learning? 
Jackie, absolutely. Because yeah. they want to please their teachers. They will love the positivity. They love the acknowledgement and the, the notice that the teachers give mm. them around their positiveness and right. not about their vulnerabilities. So yes, it does. So they strive harder and they try harder and they're more motivated and eager. And one of the things you and I noticed was teaching teachers to scale and teaching teachers to set a goal really involves the children in their own learning. It does and it also for some strange reason gets the children more motivated yeah. when they decide and they make up their own goal. That's right. When they tell the teachers how they're going to work towards that goal, what they're going to do more of, what are they going to do differently, um, they're far more involved in the process and far more willing to put their best foot forward. There's a big buy-in from the child. Absolutely. And um, it turns into collaborative teaching and collaborative learning. Yes. Merit, have you noticed any impact on your parents? Interestingly enough, yes. Parent meetings in the past have always been really negative. When I say negative, it's, it's parents come in quite defended. Mm. They're there to protect their children. They right. want their best for their children. And often it becomes almost a deadlock between teacher and parent because the school's always going to tell the parents about what the child can't do. Yeah. So our parent meetings have taken on a different slant where we work towards goals right from the beginning of our parent meetings. What are your best hopes for your child? And it's just awesome to see when the parents hear that their goals or their best hopes for their children is exactly the same as their teachers. It immediately breaks down a barrier mm -hmm. or a wall and negotiation mm -hmm. then starts to take place in terms of what are we going to do as a collaborative group mm -hmm. to work towards the best interest of their child. So so parents have um, learnt the language from their children. They in themselves come in and are well aware of how to scale. Um, they're kind of comfortable in, in the meeting situation that my child was a two, we now are a three. This is what we've put into place. We need to do more of. They're beginning to think in exactly the same way of working towards the collaborative goal that has been set by the school, the child and the parent because they've had buy-in. They seem to trust the school more. They seem wow. to have a lot more respect for the professional um, ideas of the teachers that they put forward mm -hmm. and I think also that whether they don't have the same teaching jargon as what we do we actually have the same best hope and right. that's what that's what just helps it and parents seem to feel that they because the school is positive the children come home mm -hmm. more positive they tend to be more positive in their own roles and Mary, it sounds like the parents are working with you Absolutely. Uh, and working with the teachers for the best of the child. It's a collaborative relationship. It's one of, it's not about them mm. and us, it's about us together working in the best interest of the child. That's quite amazing. And Merit, you've been busy now for nearly three years. And I'm just interested in knowing, looking back now over the last three years, what, what has stood out for you as a principal of a school that runs from a solution-focused space? What has been most helpful and most useful for you? Jackie, it's getting to work in the morning with a spring in my step, knowing that mm. there's humor, knowing that there's warmth, knowing that the children love being at school, um, the energy in the, in the actual school and the classrooms is just, it's contagious. Um, and just seeing happy children and happy teachers is, is just, is absolute manna for my soul. Merit, what brought about that happiness? What do you think made that shift? What was the difference? I think for me it's not about focusing on what the child cannot do, yeah. it's about finding that every one of us has strengths, we all have a wow, mm -hmm. and just the focus on that, just it lightens you, it brings, problems are heavy, mm -hmm. they saturate, they dark, mm -hmm. seeing strengths brings a sense of lightness, brings a sense of excitement, brings a sense of upliftment. And that's been, that's what it is. So it's changing that lens, the way you look at Correct. people, at children. And by training your staff to look at children differently, it's changed the whole energy of the school. Well, the teachers actually notice strengths in each other. Wow. So when a teacher is feeling down or has had a rough day for whatever reason, somebody will comment about a positive and it turns the energy. Mm -hmm. And you've exactly what the children see in the teachers, you'll hear them on the playground too. If somebody's having a bad day, that same type of approach 
where the kids turn around and say, but you're good at this, or you've done that, or you're special in something, has just created an incredibly nurturing, loving, warm environment. Well, Merit, I really want to thank you for allowing me to be part of your incredible journey. It has been an incredible honor to, to be part of a school that is changing into a school that searches for children's cans and looking for what the child can do and not always focusing on what a child cannot get right. So I'd like to thank you for allowing me into that space and I'd like to encourage you to keep going. Thank you, Jackie. So, if you'd like more information about the Solution Focus School, you're welcome to look at the School of Merit's website, or you can go to the Solution Focused Institute of South Africa's website, or our Facebook page, or you can follow us on Twitter at SFI Future Focus.